Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, Finch missed his very first festival ever, but it was for good reason. It turned out that Leo had sent his guards into the Highlands yet again, so we needed to give the mountain a taste of their own medicine. Finch actually used his time that would have been spent at the festival to sneak into the mountain colony. We tried our best to whittle away at their control, and I think we did a pretty good job. Now we have a relatively safe passage to the Sacred Temple, but we also have the Blossom Lake under our control. Not only is it great for catching frogs, but I'm pretty sure this is where they're growing most of their herbs, so now we have that to take for ourselves too. So we should probably spend the day figuring out how to widen our control even more, and I feel like focusing on the rivers would be a good choice. It looks like we have some battles down there as well, so I guess Finch will be going down there anyways. But first, we're going to need to maybe get a little bit of mentoring from Slate. She seems like she's the one who knows the most about swimming. She even wanted to set up a little swimming competition at the festivals. I wonder if maybe she talked to Coco about that yesterday. Can't imagine he was too impressed. I'm sure he wouldn't want to irritate Leo either, after all. And speaking of, we better see how the festival went for Starling, who I'm sure has changed out of that drab old disguise, too. It looks like he's wearing his brand new coat for the summertime season. So, Starling, do you have any new information to share with us? Finch, you're very easy to talk to, and I mean that. Don't get all embarrassed, it's a compliment, and I've talked with lots of cats, so I know what I'm talking about when I say it. Uh, did Starling have a little bit of trouble maybe mimicking Finch's ways? Mimicking his laid-back manner? I mean, he's a pretty easy cat to get along with, but I guess not everybody shares his laid-back lifestyle. Or his love for frogs, for that matter. I wonder if Griffin tried to force Starling to eat some frogs. I mean, that would be a good way to show that it's truly Finch. Not many other cats around the forest, aside from Griffin himself, seem to enjoy these things. So if anybody had to prove that they were the true Finch, they would just have to eat some of these frog legs. It was probably more of a prank in Griffin's eyes, though. Seeing that look of disgust on Starling's face surely made it all worth it. There's this weird feeling in my stomach I get when you're around. Is that normal? I sure hope so. Oh, Griffin, of course it's normal. We feel that little fluttering too. Like butterfly wings, perhaps? And I think I just saw one floating through the sky? I'm sure I saw a red butterfly flying around here somewhere, but I suppose it's alright. We have a couple of rare butterflies stashed away anyways, and I'm pretty sure that we wanted to give these to Robin, right? We're going to drop these off with Robin in the Mountain Colony to try to get her on our side. And since we've already given the Mountain Colony some interesting gifts, maybe today would be a good time for us to sneak back in there and see if we can sway her with our offerings. First though, let's go ahead and munch on this little berry that Mango gave us the day before, and we'll see if she has any information from the festival before we go. It's a good day to chat with a good friend. Let me know if you need anything, Finch. Nothing special, Mango. You've already done an excellent job giving us plenty of resources for our conquest. We'll be taking yet more of that lavender that you've grown into the rivers today. Galen, I'm sure, was quite worried about Finch's plans. Since Galen was at the festival, that meant he wasn't able to heal us. But we're doing just fine, Galen, so don't you worry. We actually have quite a few marigolds to drop off with you. And I think we're probably going to leave some catnip in here too. I would like to take this to the Mystic Colony when we have some more time, but I don't think that's going to be today. It's already starting to get a little bit darker. Oh my goodness, it's already noon. Finch, you're going to have to eat some lunch before you leave at this rate, but we still have to go talk to Slate and see if maybe she could train us in swimming. We actually have plenty of rabbits from the mountains as well. Maybe we should drop a couple into the prey pile for the winter season. I don't think we'll have to worry about starving this time around. It looks like Claudius is doing an excellent job making sure that that pile is nice and full. So here you go, Slate. In return for some of your swimming knowledge, we'll give you this rare black hair. Maybe this will even be enough to give us our final star? Not quite, unfortunately, but I'm sure she'll still be willing to help us. Any ideas for how to use a squirrel? I ask because I happen to have an extra that I thought you might like. Please take it, Finch. Oh, thank you, Slee. Is that the first time that she's given us a gift? I 
don't remember ever hearing that dialogue before. Interesting. So it looks like Slate has been out squirrel hunting since the festival. Well, I wanted to see if maybe Finch could swim across the lake as training. I'm curious if he has enough power in his swimming skill to get across this entire thing. I mean, it is pretty wide. Oh, Finch. Yeah, he's struggling a little bit, but he can just barely make it, so that's good to know. He can definitely cross a body of water that's as wide as our Highland Lake. But now, if we put some of our experience points into the swimming skill, let's see how many times we can upgrade this thing with what we have right now. It looks like two levels is going to be the max, so that's going to bring us up to level 8 in swimming, which is quite the jump from what we were at before. So is it going to be any easier for you to swim now? Oh yeah, he's going so much faster. Yes, Finch. Maybe it's not so out of the question for you to find that secret down by the ocean then. So many of you have told me that there is some secret cave down here of some sort. I can't remember exactly which tile it is, but if we swim down from the ocean, we should be able to find it. So as soon as he's at his max swimming level, that is definitely what we're going to do. But Slate, this should at least help us sneak back into the mountain colony and maybe take care of that battle too. Let's just talk to Claudius before we go in case he's been down there. I am forever in your debt, Finch. You have provided me with far more than just a home to live in. Well, he seems to be in good spirits. I guess he's been sticking around this place to make sure that no more mountain cats sneak in. And that's all well and good, Claudius, especially because we're going to be so far away. So why don't we actually use one of our valerian plants now? Then we will be able to get down there faster, since we have missed so much of the day by talking to our cats. Oh, but those are rabbits. I'm always so tempted to go after the bunnies because I know so many of his cats enjoy them. And his father, too. I would really like to have Finch go visit his father soon. Once he gets to the red heart stage with Griffin, perhaps. I'm sure he'd like a little bit of advice on how to truly impress his love. I think what we'll do is swing by the Blossom Lake. That way we can patrol the area. That's one place that we want to keep under our control for sure, so I want to make sure that Finch is making his daily rounds. It should be right off to the side here. And it looks like not too many of the mountain cats have come in here since. We still basically have this thing just to ourselves. Oh, and all for good reason, too. This is much, much closer than the swamps, and if we can catch this many frogs here... Oh, jeez. Is this one going to see us? Yeah, I had a feeling it was hopping straight toward us, but I didn't want to move. Come on, Finch. There you go. You can catch just a couple of little morsels for Griffin. We'll scare away the mouse because we don't want it affecting our chances of getting the frogs. Oh, and more have spawned over here, too? Oh, if only they weren't so tricky to catch. This is an excellent place for us to do some frog farming. We'll try to get just one more, and then we have to leave you alone, little guy. You're free to hop around the Blossom Lake for one more day, because we have a battle to get to before it gets too late. We don't want all of our guards going to sleep before we take care of them. Well, we might as well try to pick off this bunny, too. I can't resist. One more gift for sleep, since she helped us out so much today. So with some licorice roots in your belly, you should be ready to take care of whatever cats are down here. Yeah, following the river as we go. I wonder if it's the Mystic Colony? Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness, it is not. Wow, use your lion's roar because there are way too many cats on the screen. Oh, we started on the wrong end. That was insane. I have never seen that many cats in one battle before. It looks like there are still some more down here, but thanks to your lion's roar, at least you were able to make most of them go away. Oh, Finch, I have no idea how you got out of that with barely any scratches. You are so, so lucky. I think you really have your guards to thank. Petunia over here with the beautiful rosy coat. Are you here for backup? They say there were enemies spotted not too long ago around this very spot. Yeah, Petunia, you kind of just fought in the war now, didn't you? Maybe she didn't notice Finch because there were so many cats to focus on. Now let's go ahead and pick up this extra lavender plant. It's nice to see all the fireflies out again, too. You know, I don't think we ever finished giving Starling his collection of rainbow fireflies. 
That was something that we were working on the last time summer rolled around, so maybe we'll have to focus on that again. Let's go ahead and spread some lavender around this place. Make sure that this is under our control too. Yeah, if we can just follow the river straight up to the mountain colony, I feel like that would be a really good way for us to disrupt Leo's plans. It would cut him off from so much of his territory and straight from the sacred temple as well. I know he doesn't know about the forest guardian, but cutting him off from their influence is sure to help us too. Maybe a lack of the forest guardian's blessings would lessen their resources, and it would make Leo think twice about attacking us in the future. So it's a bit too late to go say hello to any of the mountain colony cats, but I do still want to see if there are any more things that we can steal from the mountain colony here. A couple of frogs. That should be the third frog, so now we'll have three to give to Griffin. We'll scare that bunny away. And did you see how fast Finch swam across the stream, even with a tougher current too? Yeah, I think he'll be able to swim into the mountain colony no sweat. The only question is whether or not Leo is going to notice. So let's have Finch warp back home. We want to make sure that he gets a little bit of sleep before he goes charging into any more battles. And it's probably not a good idea for him to be roaming around enemy territory when he's so tired right now anyways and so hungry too. Yeah, it's about time for us to go share our very, very late breakfast with Griffin. Can we plant any more seeds in our garden? Oh, looks like we're just under the amount of golden seals that we need to plant one inside here. We need six of the plants to create a seed. That's too bad. I guess we could probably scoop up some from Galen's Grove, but I'm not sure if we want to waste his resources. Would you mind, Galen? Let's see what he says. Maybe he'll tell us it's a good idea. Well, this dove seems a fitting gift for a ruler. All right, the dove, the symbol of peace. You know, that actually reminds me that we have a couple of doves to give to Starling, and I'm sure he would appreciate that as a bit of a thank you for all of his help the other day. My favorite part of summer is the warm breezes in the evening. It takes me back to my childhood somehow. Uh, she probably loves seeing all those fireflies, too. Didn't we discover that she really loves fireflies? I feel like she was another one of the cats who enjoyed them as gifts, so we'll have to make sure we catch a few extras for her. Uh, and yet more fireflies to light up the spooky entrance to Griffin's cave. I almost forgot that we had all of those beautiful red lights right behind us, Dan. They've been here for so long that sometimes I forget we actually place them ourselves. Oh my gosh. The red heart with Griffin. <gasps> We're already there, you guys. Well then, Griffin, maybe you wouldn't mind if we munch on that very last frog. We could use a little bit to eat after all. So that means we can finally go buy a shiny trinket. Ooh, a shiny trinket for Griffin? He just gave us a snake lily? Oh, Griffin, I guess you're doing pretty good with your snake lily carton then. I wonder if he actually has something inside his den too. Maybe the moles helped him out and that's how he's growing this out of season. Oh, if we only had one more, we could actually start growing some snake lily inside our den too. Wouldn't he be so impressed? Well, maybe we'll have to consult with the mystic colony for that. I know we're right around the corner from the... Ooh! Ooh, from the autumn season anyways, and that's when they'll start to grow. But this one's a nice rare butterfly, the iridescent butterfly. I think we've kept a few of these in our dens before. Yeah, we want to bring this one to Robin for sure. She is sure to love this thing. And do we have enough experience points for another swimming lesson? I would be very, very surprised. We probably haven't gained nearly enough for another lesson from sleep. That's okay, though. Finch is doing an excellent job so far, and I'm sure you would be quite impressed. Now, I didn't check where the battles are today, Claudius. Any news from your side of the den? Hello, my liege. I have discovered a gold ore, which I would like for you to have. Ah, uh, excellent. We will put this right next to our other one. I guess he's been mining out in the mole caves again. I wonder if that's a little hint that he would like us to go to. For that matter... Something I noticed yesterday was that the forest mines are right along the river too. So if we do plan on claiming every last piece of this river for ourselves, I guess we could technically have this under our control too. But it looks like all of our battles are actually positioned right around our old mining area. 
Interesting. I guess the Mystic Colony is missing their selection of gemstones. I've always imagined that the gemstones would probably work really well in the Oracle's rituals. So maybe she's sending the cats up there to fetch her some gems for her work? Oh my gosh. Oh, Leo. Oh, I didn't realize I was so close to the Sentinel Woods. Hide behind the trees, Finch. Maybe he didn't notice. We'll just take our leave. We'll sneak down this way. Oh, that was really, really close. But it's good to know that Leo is outside of his territory right now. So we might actually have time to sneak in and give the cats some of their gifts. Give Robin all of her beautiful butterflies. Yeah, let's see if we can follow the river here, straight up into Mountain Domain. I hope we still have a high enough reputation with them. Yeah, looks like we can still go inside. And it looks like the cats haven't touched any of their gifts yet. Interesting. There's a robin, though. Let's sneak around the rocks so we can get to her. And we'll give her that beautiful butterfly that we caught just earlier this morning. It's been a long time since we've talked to you, Robin. This is too generous, Finch. I love these. So, how have things been in the colony, Robin? If you're ever in need of food or other goods, you'll want to speak with Delta. That cat carries just about everything you'd ever need. Ah, so she's pointing us in Delta's direction. Maybe she thinks we should befriend Delta next? I'm actually not too sure what Delta likes. Hello there. Anything I can do for you today? You're from a different colony. What are you doing here? Ooh, and he's suspicious too. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and munch on one of our doves. And now, what should we give to Delta? I mean, we could just go with the catnip. We do have quite a bit to spare, and I know every single cat in the forest loves catnip as a gift. Oh, Finch, how did you know these were my super special favorites? Just a hunch, Delta. Seems like a pretty safe gift to give to anybody. Now, one more little butterfly for you, Robin. She loves them so much. I love that expression. And there will be plenty more for you soon. So if she wants us to consult with Delta, I guess that's because she knows he has the best grasp of their current supply of resources. He would know how much food they have. He would know about their supply of herbs. And he would know if they're struggling in any certain area. So if we need to know the Mountain Colony's weakness, he's probably one of the best cats for us to talk to and one that Leo wouldn't be too suspicious of either. And look at this Finch replacing your catnip already. We could probably offer that up to Delta 2 if we head back up there in a couple of days. I guess the next time though, well next time we should probably go to the forest colony. Since we do have that red heart with Griffin, we better go consult with Finch's father. We'll see if he has a little bit of advice. I think I've talked about this before, but Scout wasn't the one who technically proposed to Penny, so I guess he wouldn't be able to give him any advice on that front. But still, I feel like Finch would really appreciate his father's word. He has more experience regardless. It looks like the toads might be a little bit slower than the frogs, though. Oh my gosh, Finch. Well, that's good to know. We don't need any herbs or sprinting powers for toads. It might not be the ideal way to catch them, but at least we're not going home empty-handed. Now one more raspberry for the road, and I think that's about all that you're going to be able to take with you today. Oh my goodness, a mouse? A mouse in Mountain Colony territory? Well, wait a second. Some little kitty forgot to take home their morsel. I guess we'll go ahead and use one of our lavender plants and then pick up this nice fresh mouse. It's probably a better idea for us to take that home anyways. One less mouse to feed the mountain colony warriors. Oh, and this place is so pretty. We haven't been up here in such a long time. There's frogs over here, of course, with all this water about. I wonder if we've already spoken to these totems. It's not as though Finch has gone out of his way to explore the mountain colony very often. Oh no, these are forest warriors. Oh, I feel like we should probably take care of them, but it is a sad thing. Battling his own home colony? No, I can't do it. We're going to have to turn away and just warp straight back home. We're so, so close to getting on their good side again, too. So pretty soon we won't have to worry about that again. 
Once we're at a 75% reputation with the other colonies, that means that their guards won't attack us anymore when we're roaming. We'll have kind of an alliance between the feather colony and theirs. So that's where I like to be for the forest because we have a lot of friendly faces there. We don't want to fight our own family. So in the next episode, I guess we'll be heading back to the forest to say hello to Scout, and then we'll have to start thinking about saving up for the shiny trinket soon too. Our grumpy little frog lover will be moving into our den in no time. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!